Hi, in this video I'm gonna show you three different ways to animate hair in After Effects, but the last one is definitely the most advanced. You might be wondering why should we even learn three different ways to do the same thing. If you know the answer, make sure to drop it in the comments. But if you don't, stay with me until the end of the video to find out. Alright, let's not waste any time and jump straight into the first method. But before we start, if you are interested in After Effects and animation and you are still at the beginning of your journey, I've put together a free course that will help you get started really quickly and create your very first animation. To get the course, just drop comments saying free course and I'll send you the link. Okay, let's get into the first method. In this one, we're going to look at one of the simplest ways to animate her. This method, which is the easiest, is something I usually use in projects with a flat 2D style where the characters and animations are minimal. For this method, we're going to use the way warp effect. To use the way warp effect correctly, make sure to put the hair layer inside the pre-comp, just like I did. You'll also need to attach the hair to the edge of the composition at the point where it connects to the head, so it won't move too much from that spot. Now let's go back to the main composition. Apply the way warp effect on the hair pre-comp and hit play. Next we'll go into the way warp settings and adjust the values to get a better result. The first parameter is wave height, which controls how tall the waves are. Right now it's not too high, so I'll just leave it as it is. Then we've got wave width, which controls the length of the wave. I'll increase this so it looks more natural. Now if you hit play, you'll see the hair waves look much more realistic and appealing. After adjusting the width, we realize the height also needs to go up. I'll set it to 40. Here we run into a problem. The hair is shifting out of place. To fix this, we need to set the pinning parameter to the right edge so the waves don't move too much from the right side. Now when we hit play, we can see the problem is solved. But there is another issue. The wind direction on the hair is reversed. To fix that, we need to set the direction parameter to negative 90. And now if you play it back, you can see that with just a few simple adjustments, we've created a nice and a smooth hair animation for our character. The final tip I want to share is that the hair we use here was completely straight, which is why the way warp effect gave us such a clean result. But if the character's hair already has waves in it, or you've drawn some custom waves, the way warp effect might not look good and could even mess things up. So always make sure the character's hair is straight before applying the way warp effect. Alright, let's move on to the second method. In this method, I want to talk about animating individual hair clusters. This method is useful when the character's hair is in volumetric and is designed as separate clusters. And I usually use it when I want to control each hair cluster individually. For this, we're going to use a script called Puppet Hair, which is free and very easy to use in After Effects. To use this script, you first to place it in the script folder inside your After Effects installation. Then to animate, I need to select a hair layer. I've placed all the hair layers inside one composition. So I go to the composition and create pins for each cluster. For this, we use the Puppet Pin tool and add pins directly on the hair. But make sure you place the pins correctly. Starting from the base where the hair grows from the head and then add pins along the length of the cluster in order. When the layer is selected, clicking will create the pins. I've added one pin here and then two more next to it to keep the top of the hair stable. So the script doesn't move that part. Our goal is to make only the bottom part of the hair move. I continue placing the pins along the cluster, making sure they are evenly spaced. Now we just need to select the layer and press the U key to reveal all the keyframes created by the pins. So here we have the keyframes for the pin positions. But since we don't want the first three pins to move at all, we delete their keyframes. And to animate, we first need to run the script. And there are two ways to do that. The first way is to select the layer, go to File, Scripts, Run a Script File, 
and run the script from your folder. The second way is to put the script directly in the script UI panels folder in After Effects installation and then run it from the window menu. Just make sure that before running the script, all your puppet pins are selected. Here we're using the position pins, so we select their keyframes and then run the script from the window menu. After clicking the script without any extra pom pom, the animation will apply to that hair cluster. And if we hit play, you'll see the movement like this. To get the desired result, we need to tweak a few options. To make it less curved, I lowered the amp angle and set it to 9. Then we move on to direction and adjust it. Since we want the wind from the right to show more, I set it to 200. We also slightly change the phase parameter, for example to 45, to move it away from the default. Now let's adjust some other important parameters. The first one is frequency, which shows the number of movements per second. I increase it and set it to 1. If we play it now, the hair wave moves a lot, but the speed is good. To fix this, we also need to reduce the delay parameter. The default is 15, so we set it to 5. Now when we play, you'll see the hair cluster animation looks much more dynamic, like the wind is blowing from the right. In the same way, we pin all the other layers, apply the script, and use the same settings to make the animation smooth and consistent. I've created this animation for all the hair clusters, and as you can see, the final result looks really appealing. The final tip is that you can adjust the direction for each hair cluster differently to make it look more natural and interesting. Alright, let's move on to the third method. This method gives a similar result to the second one, but it's for when you want to control all the hair clusters together without adjusting each one separately. In this method, we'll introduce a new script which is also free. The name of this script is HairRig, and it works with puppet pens, making it perfect for hair clusters, though its settings are a bit different which we'll go through together. Here I have a character whose hair clusters are placed separately in individual layers. We're going to pin each one and then apply the scream to every cluster. For example, I select one hair layer and then grab the puppet pin tool to start placing pins. Just like before, we start from the base of the hair and place the pins align the hair in order. Once I place the pin, as you can see the layer's border is very large and we don't really need all that extra space. We need to reduce the area, and we can do that using the expansion parameter at the top. I set this value to 2, which makes our work much cleaner. So whenever needed, we can use expansion to slightly enlarge the area so the entire object is included, otherwise part of our work might separate and break. Now we continue placing the rest of the pins along the cluster. I press the U key and delete the first pin's keyframe. This way that pins won't be affected by any movement and will stay fixed in place. Next, just like the previous script, we run our new script. But first we have to make sure the layer is selected. In this script, we don't need all the puppet pin keyframes to be selected anymore. It's enough that the layer itself is selected. Then we run the script. As you can see, a window pops up for us. In the first settings, we need to enable the puppet pins option. You can also click rename layer so it automatically names the layer hair based on its number. This way we know our hair layers have names that are different from the other layers. Then we hit run. If we play it, we can see this hair moving nicely. We can also tweak some settings in this panel. Besides adjusting each layer individually, the script also creates a new layer called Master HR Controller, which controls all the hair layers at once. Through this layer, we can adjust some settings for all clusters together. And this makes our work much easier. We can apply this script to all hair layers and then adjust everything just through this master layer. So before applying those adjustments, I pin all the hair layers first. Then apply the script to them and move on to exploring the script settings more. 
Alright, I've pinned everything and applied the scrape to all layers at once. But as you can see, the hair is moving a bit chaotically and we don't want that. To fix this and give some order to the hair, making it look like the wind is blowing, we use the master controller layer and apply some settings. One of these settings is Master Amp. It controls the amplitude or range of the movements for all layers. For example, I lower Master Amp from 1 to 0 0.6 so we can see the effect. As you can see, the movement intensity of the layers is now much lower. I also lower Master Free to reduce the speed of the hair movement, setting it to 0 0.8. The next parameter is Master Delay, which controls the delay in the movements of the layers. I reduce it to 0.2. This way the delay between layers is less, and the animation looks more appealing. However, the hair layers still aren't fully in sync, and move a bit messy, so I reduce Master Offset Spacing to 10. Now if you play it, you'll see the timing between the hair layers is much tighter, making them move in a more coordinated way and the result looks much better. Now let's move on to the hair at the back of the head. To animate this hair, it's better to put it inside a separate pre-comp. This makes it easier to move later if needed. Another reason is that we already have a master layers and with settings affect all layers and we don't want to impact it. I put this layer in a new comp using Ctrl Shift C. Alright, to start we first place the pins. I select the layer and pick the puppet pin tool. Now I start creating the pins. Now that everything is set up, we just need to apply the script. But before that, I'll delete the keyframes of the first three pins. Then I select the layer and apply the script from this panel. If we hit play, we'll see a basic animation like this. To make the hair animation have more wave, we need to work with two parameters. First, we just lower the master freak a little. For example, set it to 0.8. Then we increase the master delay, changing it from 1 to 2. Now we just hit play and watch this exciting animation together. There is one more parameter that's worth introducing, and that's master falloff. If you remove its keyframe here and increase its value a little, you'll see that the wave and curvature in our hair shape become more pronounced. So whenever you want the hair to have more bend, after adjusting the master falloff, make sure to tweak the master delay again to get a proper result. This is a key point of this script, so pay attention to it. I can also slightly increase the master amp. For example, set it to 1.2 so the range of movement is bigger. Alright, our work is now finalized. I go back to the main comb and reduce the layer size a little. I open the scale and set it to something like 88. To prevent the hair from going too far upward, we can adjust the rotation a bit. I open the rotation and rotate it by 10 degrees. And now when we hit play, we get this really cool animation. Just like that, we were able to create a very professional hair animation using this script. Thank you so much for following along with me in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed these three methods and found them useful. And I'll see you in the next video.